It's, it's about the children that are of uh, one parent is a Muslim parent and the other parent is a non-Muslim parent. And, and how do you introduce those kids to Islam without getting them confused when the other parent is also trying to introduce them to another religion? So, and, and especially at an early age when they are five, six years old, four years old. Yes, you want to do it at an early age to get them to get used to it uh, gradually, but you also don't want to confuse them which is right, which is wrong, without telling them that this is the wrong one, this is the right one, when their mom or their dad tells them that, no, this is the right one, that's the wrong one. Oh, we have, we have, we have. <laughs> I'm a Muslim revert, and the best thing for you to do is to have the mother of that child meet us that are reverts that have little children that can play date, because then we can talk to the dynamic of that maybe, and it helped that relationship that I, I feel fostering the, and then introduce the little child to other children that will create a network of a community for the little child. Well, if, 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 if father that's your and mother is divorced and, and there's like... Well, it no, feels that way when you're, if you're with a, trust me, uh, women, okay, when you're in a relationship with someone, that's one thing, but the relationship of, uh, co-parenting is But It's different when you're, just the moms hanging out versus the partner, the ex-partner. The dy dynamic can be very, um, negative or whatever it is, but I think that it can help foster that infusion in it, Islam with a little kid. That's my idea. Um, I don't know if that's an option for you, but you know. I have a little opposite situation. My ex-husband has hostility towards um, Muslims, and so my son spends five days a week with daddy with hostility towards Muslims. He just became a revert. Then he comes with mama two or three days a week mm -hmm. and sees a whole different ball game and he says, oh, I love this. I feel good about it. But he goes back to daddy and there's hostility again and it's this back and forth, almost like you're playing tennis and you're always going to be the loser in the tennis no matter how hard you try or how much you do. And he loves it, but he feels guilty because daddy's not going to love me the same. If I'm not, if I'm not loving his religion, if I'm not playing his game, and he's not gonna let me go out with my friends if I don't play his game right, so it's sort of an, a form of emotional abuse. And then I have him, and he says, "Mom, I really love it. I feel free, and I can do whatever I want here, and I really love it." But I, but I have to go back to dad. And I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to start praying or talking to my dad about it. And I make suggestions, but I'm gonna revert myself. I've only been a Muslim a year. And now my son's been a Muslim for a month and a half, and he's struggling because he wants to pray. Like, when he prays with me, he's like, I get to leave the prayer again. You know? <laughs> he's so happy. But then when he goes back to Dad, you can see that it, it's almost like a darkness comes over himself. What do you suggest for something like that? Yeah, subhanAllah. I mean, jazakumallah khair for sharing your experiences, everyone. Um, it's, it's difficult. But remember what we said about all you control is the input, not the outcome or the output, right? When we look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, I mean, his father was the creator of idols, right? He was like the head idol maker, right? That was his father, right? But Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, even in the midst of, of, of being burned, right, for that fire to be cool upon him, you know, make that dua, make that dua of Ibrahim of asking Allah Azza wa Jal to make the fire be cool because we're all surrounded by fire in different ways and your child, it's, it's, it's going to be hard and maybe this is his test and this is his struggle. But Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها, that he will never burden a soul with a burden that's greater than that soul can bear. So your child, remind him that he is blessed because Allah Azza wa Jal has hand tailored this test for him. For him to have to struggle loving the deen, but being having a hard time practicing it. Explain to him, you know, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who loved the deen and his own father, you know, was, was willing to throw him in the fire for that. You know, your son is not alone. He's in very good company of those who struggle with parents who don't necessarily enjoy the deen or love the deen or, or are on the deen, you know. Guide him towards that. But also know you can only control your input. 
You cannot control what your husband does. You can't control how your son responds to it. Your ex, yes, I apologize. Your ex, yes. <laughs> your ex, I apologize, yes. You know, so, so I would focus on that. And that's, you know, same thing for the brother. I would say, you know, focus on your input. You know, subhanAllah, we put a lot of energy into da'wah work, you know, thinking we need people to see how beautiful Islam is. But truly our actions can speak louder than any words, you know. When your children see the light on your face when you're completing your salah, when you're looking up, you know, at the stars with them and you're saying, subhanAllah, this is so beautiful. Insha'Allah, their hearts... I don't know how they couldn't soften, you know, to the deen. So focus on your actions. Be the best Muslim you can be. And trust that Allah Azza wa Jal yahdi man yasha. And if it's written for them, inshallah, to hold on to the deen, bi'ithnillah they will. But you're only responsible for your actions.